Hey all, I'm Kevin Zoon, creative director at Young Horses. The Isle of Big Snacks is dropping soon, so I'm here to walk you through what we'll be adding to Bug Snacks. In case you missed it, the Isle of Big Snacks is a free update for Bug Snacks that adds a whole lot of new stuff to the game, and it'll be accessible to newcomers and returning players alike. The biggest addition in this update is, of course, a whole new island to explore. It's a jungle-themed biome full of new quests, stories, and supersized bug snacks. To start this content, just talk to Snorpy at the center of Snacksburg after you've completed all of his side quests. Uh, Chum, I need your help with a matter of grave importance. If you've finished the game already, hitting continue on the main menu screen will put you in Snacksburg before the point of no return, and from there you're good to go. On this new quest, you'll be reunited with Chandlo, Floofty, Sheldon, and Triffany. Adventuring together will give them a chance to explore their relationships to each other as they delve into the mysteries of the Big Snacks. Shoulder, your god is a hypocrite. Silence, you wretch! As you explore the island, you'll be playing with some new mechanics, like the volatile shrink spice or the puzzling buggy ball mazes. Is it just me? Or is that bunger way bigger than normal? <laughs> the Big Snacks are far too huge for your usual tricks, so you'll have to be extra clever to catch them in your trap. We're also adding more to the core of Bug Snacks. In Snacksburg, you can now customize your very own hut. Through your mailbox, you can take on challenges from your grumpus friends which reward you with furniture and accessories. These challenges add a variety of twists to shake up how you explore and catch. Oh, and did I mention bug hats? As you transform grumpuses, you'll start to see rare bug snacks with hats in the wild. Catching them unlocks the ability to dress up the snacks in Grable's barn. Beyond all of that, there are plenty of other gameplay improvements, small story beats, and juicy surprises waiting in this update. We've been so happy with the response to Bug Snacks, and we're excited to bring more of it to all of you. If you haven't jumped in yet, there's never been a better time. Bye bye! This is our fight now. Enough waiting. Let the hunt begin. Women love reformed bad guys, right? No brute can overpower a capable mage. There's the way forward. On your guard. Only fools trespass on my domain. You should have turned back while you still had the chance. You only draw out your own defeat, Force Lord. Beware. This will suck for you. I'd rather face an archmage than an amateur. This forest is worse than any dark alley I ever saw. It doesn't matter how hard the path becomes. We won't get through without confronting him. You could never hope to defeat me. My minions will deal with you. Don't touch my equipment. <laughs> I'd be terrified if I had minor in minions. We're not getting through this without facing the big guy. Come on, then. Let's finish this. No more games. Death to all trespassers! Play it in early access on April 20th. Tune in next time for episode two. それじゃあ驚いてもらおうかさあ大舞台の始まりだぜ戦場にも驚きをもたらそうさてちょっと遊ぶか次はどんな驚きが待っているか。
I regret nothing. I regret nothing. I regret nothing. Not you, you again. Guys. You guys? Wait a minute, are we getting paid for this?
Even now, I still don't know if I made the right choices. I just kill him and move on. But it's okay, because it lets me help everybody. But their lies intoxicated you. You burned our homes and slaughtered our families. No longer am I frozen in terror, grief, and rage. Now all I feel is the ecstasy of revenge. Grief and rage. The ecstasy of revenge. Well, I
Now that's what I call Metroidvania. So you want to make a top-tier Metroidvania. Blah, blah, blah. It's clear. Then strap in. It's time for a crash course. Let's start with a stellar setting, like a vampire's castle. Oh, how about an abandoned moon base? Actually, maybe not this time. A mysterious island. Oh yeah, a tropical crucible of crossroads, pitfalls, and puzzles. Toss in a few nasty hazards, a roster of man-eating mobs, now we're cooking. And don't even get me started on those hidden treasures. Next up, the heroes of the tale. Secret agents, each with their own personal brand of bad guy bashing. What do we have here? Magnetic arm, a grapple hook, and you can switch between heroes in a flash. Perfect for reaching new places. Now let's add some firepower because, well, I mean, you gotta. That's right, keep going. Oh, I've gotta try that one. Upgrades and customizables, they're essential. Players are gonna do things their way, so make sure you give them the tools and modules to blast in style. We're definitely not saving the best for last, the villain, Insidious Dr. Creed, and the legion of baddies at his command. A giant mecha, check. A radioactive monstrosity, double check. Now you see why we need the firepower. <laughs> there you have it, all the ingredients for a top tier Metroidvania. As you can see, we actually made the dang thing. This is our newest game, Blast Brigade. We'll see you on the island, Agent. We're done? Whew. I almost blabbed the secret ingredient. The key feature for the perfect Metroidvania, which we devs know is really... Stray Blade. Welcome back to Akria. This second combat trailer will take you even deeper into the world of Stray Blade. First of all, let's wrap up Stray Blade's combat system. Different weapons allow different ways to engage in combat. Dual wield, two-handed, or the classic shield and sword. There is always a new finisher to discover. On top of that, you guessed it, a clean, sleek dodging system. Now it's time to introduce you to your ever-trusty companion, Boji. He will guide you through the ancient valley of Akria, be it through his wit or his magical powers. The bond between you and your little companion is crucial, as he will be the one helping you out of tricky situations. You see, death is inevitable, so you need to make sure Boji is around when things go sour. He will try his best at keeping you alive, occasionally reviving you when you thought the battle was already lost. Although he is well versed in the arts of magic, Boji is not afraid to get physical. He will pounce at enemies, giving you a window of opportunity to fight immediate threats. Boji is a cunning scholar. By throwing your enemies off balance, he'll give you a brief opening, allowing you to deliver an opportunistic backstab. Finally, after you establish a strong bond with Boji, he'll help you to the fullest. Blasting your enemies with magical shockwaves, scattering them around, and giving you multiple opportunities to get into the action. Stay tuned for more updates, and be one of the first to explore Akria by adding Stray Blade to your wishlist.
The only chance we have of surviving is to fight back with the Sentinels. Now, let's go! Understand the situation we're in. That area is under attack by D forces. I gotta dance with these chumps first. Let's do this together. That was awesome. You got them all in one shot. Slow down. Different combat situations might call for different weapons. I'm back in the fight. Don't get ahead of yourself. We're not done here. We need to focus on protection. Then we have our plan. Let's move out! Keep it together. Everything will work out. Inequity rips at the very fabric of society. The profligate few lead lives of excess. But comfort breeds complacency. These highborn have no idea what lies beneath. Society's outcasts are trapped here. But in the end, we are all trapped. A fish rots from the head down. And the only cure is to cut it off. We are the sword. We are the Ascendant. Rated M for Mature. Oh boy, another experiment. It was wonderful for Rebellion to ask if they could come over and photograph some of the authentic weapons and vehicles that we've got. I was quite amazed at how this works because for each item they would take three or four hundred photographs to make sure it was absolutely perfect. We've done German half tracks, German tanks, all kinds of artillery pieces. The one part we did a Kattenkrad. Kattenkrad is a tracked vehicle. It's like a motorbike with tracks on. This particular Kattenkrad was in the film Saving Private Ryan. And a lot of people might remember it's the one where it nearly topples over it goes around the corner. I nearly had a heart attack that day, but that's another thing. It's all about getting the detail of the items so it looks 100% authentic on this fantastic video game. It's very important to us in all of our games that guns sound as realistic as possible. Our artists go to great lengths to visually represent the guns. Of course, we apply the same rigorous, uncompromising approach to the sound. We're really going all out on Sniper Elite 5. We're recording more guns than all of our previous sniper titles combined.
We all know Carl likes to sneak around, stealthily picking off the enemy with his silenced pistol. So it was a no-brainer really for us to get the well rod into the game, and we're really happy with how it's sounding. And it's great to have that level of detail for one of our signature weapons. So we're really going for authenticity. Sniper Elite is a very cinematic sounding game. So when you hear a rifle in Sniper, we want it to sound big, we want it to sound exciting, but we also want it to be based in realism. We're going to be setting the microphones up at various points downrange from the guns so that we can get a number of different perspectives. So we'll be recording up close. We're going to be recording far away. Close recordings will give us some nice mechanical detail. and the distant recordings that we can use for distant gunshots in the game. So the most exciting gun for me to capture is probably the Thompson. It's a gun that has a lot of history. Hearing all of the mechanical parts moving, recording every single element of it, and the firing itself was just really fun. I think the great thing about SE5 is there's so much customization in there and so many different varieties of weapons that you can replay missions and with different weapons will really give you a different experience. Kind of gone to town um, from front to back, you know, stock, magazines, receivers, through to barrels, scopes, iron sights. There's, there's a lot in there. They all exist within the world in workbenches, and these will be located in strategic locations or hidden away in a sort of back room in what we call armories or resistance caches. This allows the players to change their playstyle in real time without having to go back to the front end or committing to a loadout from the start of a mission. So in SE5, we've added the ability to look down iron sights, which takes you more into a more immersive first-person style view. There's four main archetypes of how you can play Sniper Elite. Stealth, we've got power, we've got speed, and we've got control, and control might be like, you sit back on a hill 600 meters away and snipe at your targets carefully. Or you might run and gun and you take in the big gun, loud, and you just lay down fire. What we wanted to do is set up a loadout system, weapons, equipment, items, that let you play in the way that you want to play. Working with partners such as the Imperial War Museum and Royal Armouries gives us a level of authenticity that helps us elevate the game and add historical accuracy as well. We try to encourage more focus on thinking and planning, which is really what underpins the Sniper Elite experience. We changed the default loadout so that the pistol for SE5 encouraged players to play with a different play style than SE4 and explore all of the attachment and customization options we have available in SE5. Susano, a god whose strength has been taken away. Explore procedurally generated roguelite stages and defeat hordes of samurai and demons to regain your power. Even if you are taken down, your skills and power will be passed on for the next attempt. Overcome numerous challenges and hone your skills to defeat the mighty eight-headed serpent. Defeating Samurai and Generals will award you with Combat Scrolls. Combat Scrolls contain various combat techniques such as Slice, Thrust, and Jump. You can freely combine combat techniques in the Action Builder. Stacking multiples of the same technique will increase its power, and you can even add elemental and special attributes to your attacks. Create your own unique movesets. Over 100 legendary brave generals stand in Susanoo's way. Defeating these brave generals will drop useful pieces of armor. When equipping these in the gear builder, Susanoo doesn't just get stronger, his appearance changes as well. But be careful, upon defeat Susanoo will lose all the gears you have collected. 
Prepare for every possible fight and devise battle techniques. Then, defeat the onslaught of samurai, demons, and the fearsome eight-headed serpent, Yamata no Orochi. Hack and slash your way through the battlefields with limitless skill combinations. Japanese-style roguelite action game, Samurai Bringer. Coming to Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, and Steam on April 21st. Nebula got out. The little Nazi fucks. They set off Nebula bombs across the world. Paris, London, Moscow, and now Caldera Island. I ordered Team Harpy to intercept the package and make the Nazi bastards miserable along the way. They needed no encouragement. But what none of us knew was that a storm was on the horizon. With Nebula, the Nazis had unwittingly shaken something awake. Something far more powerful and fearsome than anything we could ever hope to comprehend. <laughs> ゴノヨルド。リクエストはあるか。では1曲。タランテラを聞かせてもらおうか。オープンユアマジックタクティック。ま、遅い、遅い。ファルト。ゲンカヤ君のリング。ないな。ファルト。ゲンカヤ君の
だよな千人キング踊った耐えてくれよお分かりやめんな踊った霧がお分かり遅い勝負気なやっぱり遅いそれぞしかし気になるやってくれセイクやめてくれよここだないいなやるしかたありませんやめてろだよなこのダブルケーオだ勝利ご苦労様だったな演奏は気に入ったかこのボリュームとか覚えておきな It feels amazing to work on a, a TMNT game.、Um, really, it's, a, it's really a passion project. If I were going back in the past and telling my younger self, like, hey, you're gonna work on a TMNT game, I would be like, what? <laughs> like, that's amazing. Yes, so yeah, it feels, it feels pretty cool. We grew up with TMNT.、Uh, I remember at Halloween dressing up as、uh, Donatello. It's always been like, really present in my, my childhood. So, Donatello is your favorite?、Um, actually, Raphael is my favorite. <laughs> Because we're already working on, on Switch of H4, we already had in mind、uh, to do a beat them up. We started discussing with Nickelodeon, and then we met at GDC. and...、Um, They told me that someone else was pitching the same kind of project than we were pitching. And、um, yeah, we just decided to, to join forces.、Yeah. The decision to go for the, the 87、uh, TMNT is really、uh, because that's what we, we grew up with, and that's,、um, that's where our, our heart yeah, stayed. Goes,、right? yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think also that's what fans really wanted to see as well. There was a lack of seeing some 87 design coming back in some sort of way, and with a retro game, it just makes sense. Working on, a, on the TMNT, TMNT license is great, but working on the TMNT license from that era is even greater because it just like, makes you know, so much no nostalgia for, for us and, and for, for, for the people we work with.、Mm -hmm. It just made sense, basically. Yeah, all the research was already done. Our, exactly. Our kids <laughs>、yeah. self、exactly. did all the work back then. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah. so it, was really,、uh, it was really exciting to go、yeah. back to that、yeah. time. I think also the Beat of Ochar was really at its prime around the 90s.、Um, so it just made sense to, to go back to that design and、yeah. that era. We, we really wanted to, um, um, to show people where we were going for, and that's why we chose as well to,、uh, to do a, a fully animated trailer with the original、uh, track from the, from the show. I knew that people would love what you guys did because the, the pixel art is just amazing, the animation is amazing, and it's just exactly what people were looking for. So I was pretty confident it was going to work out. I feel like the、um, TMT games were really at its prime.、Um, During the arcade era of the 90s. So it only made sense to go back to, to the roots. All the, the, the toys, the, the comics, the, the show, they, when we started working on the project, it all came back to me, kind of like even the toys I had back in the days,、uh, the ones that I really cherished,、um, and that we could see in the game. It was super, just super exciting because, in the end, like, you can relieve that period and with, with a game like that,、uh, especially with those beautiful pixel art. It was just perfect、uh, with that design, and、um, I'm glad that Nickelodeon let us do that, definitely. Yeah, that was definitely a, a dream. Dotemu and Tribute Games, I think, share the same passion for retro games.、Um, when we,、uh, I looked yesterday a bit uh, uh, at your,、uh, your office, and、uh, there is someone in your team working on old consoles already. You know, like, it's, just, it's just the same, it feels at home almost, you know? Yeah, I think we, we share a lot of、um, things in common in that regard. Like, you, you guys. Have done、uh, so many remakes and, and taken some old games and revitalized them. We were still working on Switch of Rage 4.、Uh, well, we, we started working on,、um, at least on the, the project of doing a new TMNT Beat Them Up. And I, I really like the fact that you guys had a different approach. I think 
there's uh, obviously going to be a comparison with uh, TMNT and Streets of Rage. And yes, they're beat em ups, but they they have totally different pace and and uh, dynamics. So yeah, that, I think it's really good that you guys have that experience and you're, you shared that with uh, with us. <laughs> This is actually the, the second TMNT game that I've worked on. I also worked on the TMNT game for Game Boy Advance. That was like really a dream back then. Um, it still had its limitations, like the Game Boy Advance um, doesn't have a really good support for multiplayer. And we all know that TMNT needs to be played yeah. for players. Yeah. Um, so this is like a, a second chance at really doing the, yeah. the best project that we could imagine. Congrats to, to the Tribute Games team because it's been a, it's been a tough development process, especially with, uh, with the, 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 the current situation with uh, COVID-19, but uh, yeah, the result is great, so really looking forward to it. お気に入りのおもちゃ、見つけたなるほど。おもちゃに殺されるのが好きなんですね。オープンユアマジックサービス。行くわよ、マイド。行くわよ。パルクイド。ハッピー。それ、トリプル。それ、ガッチャ。沈みなさい。星。ここからまだまだ。ハッピー。パルクセッチ。ゆかい。これで。あなたの先生。どうです。あなた。それ、ダッチ。それ、ダッチ。そう。
あなたが押せシャフトと目ざわくいくわこっちくわこっちくわあなたが押さなとゆかるくいだまだまだまだまだまだまだまださすがのあなたもしばらく動けないでしょ You're a match for me. Yo, you need a man pack. You can't compare to me. We do this my way. All good things come from the soil. Wheat, corn, the foundations of civilization itself. Cocoa, the indulgence that makes it all worthwhile. And coffee, of course. Proof that small seeds can have great effects. Here at the Hacienda, we treat agriculture as an art. We know the best time to plant each crop, the ideal way to spread the fertilizer, and if I say so myself, how to build in style. But this is about more than just farming. On the back of this agricultural boom, our people will prosper. With every crop we plant, we are sowing the seeds of change. <laughs> 